Good morning, everyone. Hello. I feel so bad. Everyone's having great conversations. It's a very exciting day today, but we just hit 10. We'll just get everyone to meander and take a seat wherever they would like. Ooh, very orderly. Uh, hi everyone, good morning, and welcome to our very special Christmas Day service here at Lickham Anglican Church. Um, my name is Jenny, I'm one of the regulars here, and I'll be leading today's service. Um, here we are, guys, we made it to Christmas. Been counting down since October, or if you're cold, you've been counting down since Easter, because you've probably been putting Christmas things up anyway. And I'm sure many of you guys have festivities planned, presents, food, um, and even if Christmas isn't a big thing for you and your family, uh, no doubt it's a great time for you to be resting and getting rejuvenation after a long year. But in addition to all those really great things, I hope today can be a day that's filled with joy and thanksgiving for the birth of Jesus Christ. And for those of us who may not know much about this Jesus Christ, that's okay. The Bible paints a very vivid picture of who he is and what he came to do. So in the book of Isaiah, hundreds of years before Jesus' actual birth, it was already prophesied of a birth of someone quite extraordinary. As it is written in chapter 9, verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And it is his birth um, that we celebrate today. So if you have any questions about what Christmas is and who Jesus is, um, you're more than welcome to grab myself, Jay, or any of the regulars here. We love to have a chat. So we'll now start service by singing a couple of songs together. And because it's Christmas, of course, it's some carols. Uh, Joy to the world and O come, O ye faithful. So I hope as you sing them, you're able to reflect on the joy, peace, and hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So please stand, everyone, and happy singing. Joy to the world Thank you. 
Welcome to everyone again, and Merry Christmas. Um, I'll just ask you all to stay standing for a bit longer. Um, so friends, each Sunday, particularly on this Christmas Sunday, we come together to hear from God's Word, the Bible, uh, to give praise and thanks um, for all He has done for us through singing songs together, um, and to pray for each other and for the world around us. Even though we come from different places, have different skills, and do different things in life, we are united as one family under God. Um, but naturally, like the brokenness in this world, we too are far from perfect. Uh, we often fall short, hurt others, or turn away from God. But if we sincerely turn back to Him, seeking His forgiveness, we are redeemed, forgiven, and reconciled in His goodness and mercy. Please take a seat, everyone. And yeah, one way we can commit to him the times we have rejected him and fallen short is by praying together as a church. Um, and praying is just how we talk to God, knowing that he listens, he cares, and he will strengthen us in everything that we do. So on the screen right now, we see um, this prayer of confession. Um, please take some time to read it and consider if it reflects what you're going through at the moment. Um, and in a few moments, if you feel comfortable, please um, join me as we pray this together. Okay. 
Okay, so if you feel comfortable, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have gone our own way and broken your laws. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you more and more through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have this great promise of assurance that the Lord is merciful and loving, patient and full of constant love. Uh, he does not punish us as we deserve, or repay us according to our sins and wrongs. As high as the sky is above the earth, so great is his love for those who love him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins from us. Amen. So, friends, I think I speak for a fair few of us that we are pretty experienced in terms of what Christmas is all about. I mean, we've had a few, and we kind of know what foods are Christmassy, what sort of presents to buy-ish, <laughs> what sort of decorations should be put up. The list goes on. But what about the story of the very first Christmas? How well do you think you know it? Let's find out by doing a quiz together. Um, and the quiz is also titled, How Well Do You Really Know the Christmas Story? And after last week's little uh, hiccup, let's try to give this a second shot. So everyone, I'll get you on your feet. Stand up. Get the circulation going, please. Thank you. Um, and um, as usual, it's a multiple choice. A is hands on your head. B is hands on your shoulders, C is hands on your hips, and D is hands on your butt. A, B, C, D. You good? Sweet. All right, Nick, please no frantic looks today. Oh, yes, this is good. We'll have our first question. So, there was a star over the manger on the night Jesus was born. True or false? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of... Trues, trues, lots of trues. All right, so the answer is actually false. I know, that's surprising because we see the nativity scene and there's always a star, but that star actually didn't appear um, to the shepherds and it wasn't over the uh, manger where Jesus supposedly was. The star actually appears to the three wise men, but that could have been a couple of years after Jesus' birth. Hope that rocked your boat a little bit. We have more. Question two, how many wise men were there at Jesus' birth? By the way, the pictures are not indicative. Like, they're not going to give you the answers-ish. Um, so, oh my gosh. Um, well, I hope you don't all press A. I mean, select A. It's A, B, C, and D, hopefully clear enough. But yeah, what is everyone's guess? I'm seeing a lot of B. Actually, um, the answer is not specified. <laughs> oh, Chris, good job. And if you read through all the accounts of the Christmas story, it just says wise men. It uh, never says three, but we always hear the three gifts they presented to Jesus and assume it's three. Yes. All right, next question. Jesus wasn't actually born on December 25th. True, false, or debated? A, B, or C. <laughs> I see false, I see, I see true, I see debated. This one's a little bit more, yes, I think a little bit more divided, but the answer is C, <laughs> debated, and that's true. It's not entirely clear when Jesus was born. Some people have said March, April, and May, um, but December 5th was just kind of the date that was selected. Um, there's even like a bit of contention as to why that day was selected too. All right, second last one. How did Mary travel with Joseph to Bethlehem? A, camel. B, donkey. C, cart. D, unsure. I see some Cs. I see some Bs, mainly Bs. All right. The answer is unsure. <laughs> And again, same thing when you read through the accounts. Um, it's not clear how Mary was traveling. It doesn't seem fair that a woman who's nine months pregnant is sitting on a donkey. Um, maybe a cart is a bit more practical, but it's also not specified. And last one. Ooh. 
the last question. Jesus was born in a barn slash stable slash manger. True or false? Lots of truths. Prepare to be wrong, everyone. It's actually <laughs> false. Um, yeah, so we know Jesus was laid in a manger. That much is clear in the biblical accounts. But it's not actually clear where he was born. That was not clearly written. Cool, everyone. Please take a seat. <laughs> I am so sorry. I think everyone learned something new about the Christmas story. And I don't think I'll ever see a nativity scene the same way again. And I think I've just ruined it for everyone as well. Um, but I think it's just really interesting how we've put this picture of Christmas together just from pop culture and tradition. Um, but it's actually really insightful to consider how the Bible actually describes the Christmas story. And we'll be learning more about this from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18, um, through to chapter 2. Um, but before I invite Angie to read um, from the Bible, uh, followed by Jay, who'll give us a sermon, um, I'll just pray to commit this time to God. Heavenly Father, give us faith to receive your word, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Uh, as Jenny mentioned, we are reading from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, all the way through to chapter 2, verse 12. Um, so if you have your physical Bibles on you, I'll give you all a minute to open up, um, first starting at chapter 1, verse 18. From verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born, of, born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where this Messiah was born, to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who is shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I, may, I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and pre presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. I'm Jay, one of the ministers here at this church. It's great to see you all here this morning on Christmas Day. Well, let's pray as we come to looking at God's Word. 
Heavenly Father, thank you that we can gather together on Christmas Day. Thank you for your faithfulness and how you sent your son Jesus over 2,000 years ago, just as you promised. Thank you that we can remember and celebrate his birth today, the one that is our savior and the one who saves us from our sins. We pray that as we celebrate and remember his birth this morning, that we will, be, we will see what is truly special about Christmas. We also pray that we will overflow with praise and thanksgiving for you and for our Savior Jesus. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. Well, Christmas is a special time in the year, isn't it? It's ingrained in our calendar as a public holiday. There are countless celebrations and festivities in our community, at work, with our family and friends. There's even a general vibe of positivity and joy, isn't there? I've noticed that my neighbors, who don't usually interact too much with me, smile and wave. Those who come across in the shops are generally more positive and upbeat. But what makes Christmas so special? I wonder if you ever thought about that. Is it the special decorations that only come out during this time, or supposed to come out during this time? Maybe you've driven around and you've seen some amazing creations that people put up front of their houses. That's a really fun thing to do. There's actually de uh, websites dedicated to finding the best houses in Sydney. And here's a bit of a preview. Look at that. Amazing. I wonder how long it would take to take it all down <laughs> after. <laughs> and another one with a bubble machine. Amazing. So that's just a preview. There's plenty more out there. Is it the special food that we get at Christmas? Gingerbread, baked ham, pavlova, fruit mince pies, Christmas pudding, plenty of delicious Christmas treats. Is it the special presents that many of us get, which we all wait patiently until Christmas Day to open? Is it the time off that we get from a busy year from work, uni, or school? Special Christmas decorations, special Christmas food, special presents and special time off, all those things are indeed special and contribute to making Christmas a very special time. But they are not the main thing that makes it special. Christmas is special because of something very different. It is the birth of a very special baby, something that Christmas celebrates and remembers. Now, what, does, what makes this baby special? Ask any parent and they would say that their baby is special. All parents think that their baby is special. So why is this baby in particular so special? And in our passage this morning, we see a few reasons why this baby is so special. So let's have a look. First up, we see that this baby had a special birth. Have a look at verse 18 to 19. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pleased to be married, married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Now, the story of the birth of this baby Jesus starts very normally. We see that this baby Jesus had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph. Very normal for a baby. Very quickly, though, we see this birth isn't very normal after all. You see, Mary was a virgin. She had not come together with her husband like couples do to make a baby. Yet she was pregnant. Mary didn't become pregnant through normal means as well. She was pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Now, this isn't the same as in Greek mythology where God's impregnated human women. That's not what's going on here. God can create life out of nothing. The Holy Spirit had worked inside her womb to create a baby through supernatural means. So this was an unplanned and special pregnancy. And like unplanned pregnancies usually do, this creates a scandal. Joseph noticed a bit of a bump showing and finds out that Mary, his fiancée, was pregnant. And he knows two things. He knows that they haven't come together yet, and he knows how babies normally come about. So he makes a very logical connection. If, you haven't, if we haven't come together, the baby must have come from someone else. Has Mary cheated on me? So he starts his plans to rectify this situation. Now, something important to know is that Mary and Joseph were engaged and not married yet, but this engagement was much more serious than we have today. This engagement went along, around for a year, 
and they called each other husband and wife, but they lived separately. And it was only terminated by death or a divorce. Only once they had a public ceremony and the husband brought the wife home could they come together. According to the Old Testament law, sexual activity before marriage had the penalty of death. It was that serious. But at that time, though, public divorce was the rule and penalty. So Joseph, a man that was faithful to the Jewish law, had to take action. But he also was compassionate to Mary. He cared for her. A public divorce would lead to great shame for Mary. But there was another option. The other option was to have a private divorce in, uh, in front of two witnesses. And this private option wouldn't lead to shame for Mary. And that's what Joseph was planning to do. Until something special happens to Joseph. Have a look at verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. An angel appears to Joseph in a dream and tells him what is actually going on. Mary hasn't been unfaithful, the baby doesn't come from another man, but the Holy Spirit created life in her. So do not be afraid to take her as your wife, Joseph. The birth of baby Jesus was far from normal. It was different from any other birth. Baby Jesus had a special birth, something that points to the fact that this baby isn't just any baby. He is someone very special. Uh, In September this year, my precious baby daughter, Hannah, was born. Uh, She's my second child. But when we got to the hospital's birth unit, we asked the midwife, what do we actually do in here? So we're so shocked because this, isn't this your second child? Shouldn't you know what happens? You see, my first child wasn't born under normal circumstances. He was born in the foyer of Westmead Hospital. Uh, He was too keen to come out, and we didn't make it to the birth unit. It wasn't a normal, straightforward birth. So much so that they they asked us to write an article to put on the hospital's website, which you can look up if you want to. But even though my son's birth wasn't normal, it doesn't compare to this baby. And we have a few midwives in our congregation. I haven't asked them but I'm 100% sure that they will confirm that they have never seen a baby born from a virgin. That doesn't happen. Baby Jesus had a special birth. Something points to this, that this baby isn't like any other baby, but a very special baby. Well, not only does baby Jesus have a special birth, another reason why this baby is special is because he has a special role. Have a look at verse 21. She will give birth to a son, and you ought to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. In the dream, the angel also tells Joseph some other things. First, that this baby is a boy. There's no need to do any scans. And second, that they are to name their son Jesus. Now, the name Jesus was a pretty common first century name. It was a Greek translation of the Hebrew name Yeshua, or in English, Joshua. And the name means God saves. Why is this boy named Jesus? Because he will save his people from the biggest problem that humanity has ever had, their sins. What is sin? Sin isn't something trivial. Sin is serious and it's a matter of life and death. Sin is rebelling against the all-powerful, all-knowing God, the one who creates us and gives us life. Sin is rebelling against this God and living life our own way rather than God's way. It's saying, I don't need you, God, and I think I know better than you, God. This is something that every human being has in their nature, and it corrupts all their being, and it leads to destruction, death, hurt, and pain, alienation from God and from each other. It leads to a broken environment and world. But God doesn't let this keep going on forever. He will bring justice and make things right. And so humanity faces death and punishment for rejecting the one who gives life and every good thing. This isn't just physical death, but eternal death, separation from God and every good blessing that he brings. But because of God's great love, he promised a savior from the very beginning, someone who would save his people, someone that would do what we cannot do, which is to save us from this terrible heart disease of sin 
so that we can have eternal life instead of eternal death and punishment. This promised Savior, after hundreds and hundreds of years, finally comes in baby Jesus. He is the promised Savior, the one that can do what we cannot do. He is the true Joshua, the one who brings everlasting rest for the weary soul, the one who wears the tattered garments of our filthy hearts so that we can be clean and white as snow, the one whose name is so sweet to his people, those that trust in him. Something that is captured so well in the hymn by John Newton, which says, How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in the believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away our fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. When does Jesus do that? When he grows up to be a man, a man that is hung upon the cross. And that, how he, that is how he saves us. Something that we celebrate a bit later next year at Easter. Baby Jesus is special because he has a special role. He is named Jesus, and he is the one that saves his people from their sins. For parents, uh, naming of the children is a pretty varied process. Uh, some parents think long and hard about whether the name and meaning matches their kid. Uh, sometimes they fulfill that name, and sometimes, other times they don't. Some other parents are a bit more chill about it, they don't put much thought into it, they just call them what they like and what sounds nice. For Athena and I, we were more in the first group. We chose to name our son Tobias, which means God is good, and that's, as that's what we hope and pray that Tobias will know all his life. And we chose to name our daughter Hannah after Hannah in 1 Samuel. She's a very faithful woman, and we hope and pray that Hannah will be faithful and trust in our great God all her life. And for Jesus, he is named Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And he is someone that fulfills that perfectly. Baby Jesus is special because he's a special role. He is the named Jesus as he's the one that saves us from our sins. Finally, J baby Jesus is special because of the surrounding circumstances around his birth, which you see in the rest of this story. So first up, we see that the Magi come to worship him. And the Magi were astrologers and wise men from the east of Israel in the areas of Persia. And they had probably read a lot of the Old Testament from the Jews that had gone into those areas during the exile many years before. So they knew that there was a promised king of Israel coming. And this promised king would be shown by a rising of, the, of a star, which comes from the book of Numbers. They saw a special star in the sky, and so they made their way to Jerusalem to see where this king was, so that they can worship and pay homage to him. They met with King Herod, the proxy king of the time, and King Herod inquired of the religious leaders where this uh, promised king would be. What did they say? They said Bethlehem as early prophecies of this promised king in the book of Micah had said that this promised king will come from there. So these wise men went along to Bethlehem. In Bethlehem, the star reappears and stops over the place where the baby was. And when they found this baby, they bowed down in front of this baby. They worshipped and paid homage to him. They gave him frankincense, which was a valuable spice and perfume, gold, another valuable gift, Myrrh, another valuable spice and perfume. Now, these gifts were expensive gifts, gifts fit for a king. So these wise men came from far away, had a star guide them to this baby. They bowed down and paid homage to him, the promised king of Israel. Now, that's something that doesn't happen to every baby, does it? This baby is a special baby. Second, the actions of King Herod. King Herod, like I said before, was a proxy king of Israel. Israel was occupied by the Romans, and Herod was put in place as the king, but under Roman authority. How does he act towards this baby? In verse 3, we see that he was disturbed when he heard the Magi were looking for him. And later on in the chapter, he made the order to kill all the babies in Israel under two to get rid of this baby. He felt threatened by this baby. He knew that this baby was the promised king, and he was worried that he would be replaced as king. 
So he makes this shocking order to try to get rid of him. King Herod knew that this baby wasn't any baby. He was the promised king, so he felt threatened by him. He was a special baby. And the third is the fulfillment of Scripture. We've already seen some fulfillment of Scripture already, uh, with the rising of the star guiding the Magi to baby Jesus. And there's two other times in the passage we receive some fulfillment of Scripture. The first is in verse 22 and 23. It says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The special conception of Mary, who was a virgin, and the birth of a son wasn't random. And in the future, the recognition and calling of Jesus Emmanuel, which means God with us, when his people are saved from their sins, isn't random as well. It fulfills a prophecy made hundreds and hundreds of years before in the book of Isaiah. Not all babies are full scripture written hundreds of years before, do they? And not only that, we see that this baby is God in the flesh. This baby is 100% God and 100% man. You can't say that about any other baby. And the other time we see fulfillment is in verse 5 to 6. Oh, that's a weird formatting. <laughs> Uh, just be patient with it. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And this is from the book of Micah, and it's talking about the promised king once again. The promised king will come from a place called Bethlehem, a place that was insignificant and unimportant. So where do we see these babies from? In Bethlehem, just as this prophecy says. This baby is someone that fulfills this scripture. He is someone very special, the promised king. And all these circumstances, again, point to the fact that this baby is unlike any other. He is very special. And we've seen that throughout our whole time today, haven't we? This special baby is what Christmas is all about. Christmas is, isn't truly special because of decorations, food, presents, and holidays. It is truly special because of this very special baby. Christmas remembers and celebrates the birth of this special baby, the one that was promised long ago, the one that fulfills all these prophecies, the one that is the saviour of his people, and the one that does what we cannot ever do. He's the promised king. So as you celebrate Christmas here, of course you can have a great time looking at decorations, eating some delicious food, which we're going to have after our service today, and enjoy your time off. But as you do, remember what makes it truly special. It is the birth of our Savior Jesus, the one that brings everlasting joy and hope. Do you know him? Do you see him as special? Will you let Jesus exchange his perfection before your mess. This Christmas, why don't you consider him afresh? Come to him, the promised king, and you will find life, salvation, and a joy that doesn't end. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Christmas. Thank you that we can remember what makes Christmas truly special. Help us to praise and overflow with thanksgiving this Christmas and live for our king this year, next year, and into the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Jay. Our friends, we'll now respond uh, to what we've learned through singing a song, Maker Made a Child. Um, and it's a song that talks about how Jesus was more than a baby. Um, he was fully God, triumphant king, a ruler, and the true light. Um, so please stand, everyone, as we sing together.
was once a child, a son born long ago, in Bethlehem's dark cold night. A promise for the world, his birth was long foretold, a baby born to swallow. Take a seat. Um, we'll now continue our time for response by reading a psalm together. Um, and the Book of Psalms is a compilation of songs and poems um, that capture a range of responses to God uh, from reverent awe to sincere cries for God's help. Um, and today's psalm is Psalm 110, verses 1 to 7, uh, which talks about God's amazing power and righteous judgment. Um, so if you'd like, please join me in reading this together. 
The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle. Arrayed in holy splendor, your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge the nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. He will drink from a brook along the way, so he will lift his head high. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we've now come to some time of prayer, and we'll start it off by um, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Um, so if you feel comfortable, please join me as we pray this together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Um, I'll now invite Angie to lead us in prayer. Thanks. Thanks, Jenny. Um, today we'll be praying for this Christmas message we've heard, praying in thanks um, and praying for um, the new year to come that we'll continue to live faithfully, um, praising God for his great son. Uh, so please join me and bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for Christmas and the amazing message of hope and salvation that it stands for. Thank you for your son, Jesus, whose humble birth reminds us that he was a king who came to serve and not to be served. Thank you as well that we can remember the purpose for Jesus' birth, which was ultimately his death and resurrection, to bring us reconciliation with you. In our daily struggles with sin and selfishness, help us to remember the selflessness, selflessness of Jesus and his triumph over darkness. Lord, please help your son's life of servant-heartedness inspire us to serve others this Christmas. We pray for intentional hearts that want to serve those who are less fortunate than us this Christmas with whatever we can. And we pray especially for opportunities to serve our family and friends who don't know you yet by boldly sharing the gospel with them. Father, this Christmas, help us. Please have your hand over those separated from their loved ones by distance, death, or other challenges. We pray your strength and love would bring lasting change to the lives of these brokenhearted people. Please lift up our brothers and sisters who are celebrating Christmas in countries where they're persecuted for their faith and help them to remain safe and hopeful. We thank you for how blessed we are to celebrate our Lord Jesus today and every day. And in the new year, we pray you would unite and uplift us as a church to grow in our love for each other and our knowledge of you. Please keep those who are traveling safe on their holidays and grant those of us who are weary and tired the much needed rest that we need this year. We pray for all of these things in your son's mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much, Angie. Um, and um, we'll just pray this prayer of thanksgiving, um, just to thank God for all he's done for us, not only on this special day, but for everything that he's done through us through our daily lives. Um, so I'll just pray this prayer for us. But if you do agree, feel free to join in for the amen at the end. Almighty God, creator and redeemer, we praise you for the beauty of the world around us and for every gift we enjoy. Thank you for creating us to know you, to love you and to obey you. Most of all, we praise you for your amazing love in sending your son to restore your world by dying for us and rising to give us new life. Accept our praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Now, in the festive spirit, we have a very special treat for you all. Uh, we're going to have a performance from our lovely kids here at LAC. So let's give them a round of applause to welcome them.
Amazing job, guys. You guys are so cute. Come on. Oh, coordinated exits, right? Coordinated exits. What? Oh, yeah. I should go with them, eh? My mental age is five, so that actually works out very well. Thanks, guys. You did so well. So proud. Another round of applause. Oh my gosh, that was a really tough act to follow. I feel like I need to sing the rest of the announcements now. <laughs> well, maybe I won't because I think everyone likes to keep the eardrums for Christmas. Um, but announcements. New year, new sermon series. So next week we'll be continuing our series in the book of Mark, which we actually started in the beginning of the year. 
Um, so as we begin a new year, um, we can rediscover Jesus and, yeah, kind of find out who he is, what he taught, and what he came to do. And the next announcement is Christmas lunch. Um, so we'll be having a Christmas lunch here in the hall. Um, so if you are free after service and you want a great bite, um, feel free to hang around. It'll be $6 per person. And our kitchen team has worked very hard to prepare us a feast. So, yeah, definitely hang around for that. Um, otherwise, all your regular announcements are going to be in the bulletin link just behind me. Um, it will be tied to the YouTube live stream if you ever want to find it later in the week. Well, friends, that wraps up most of the formal part of our Christmas Day service. And today we learned from Matthew chapter 1 and chapter 2 uh, that Christmas Day was a very special day, celebrating Jesus Christ from his special birth to his special role in very special circumstances. Um, do you believe that Christmas is truly special because of this? So we hope you can reflect on this uh, through this festive season. Um, to conclude service, um, please join me in saying the grace together. Momentary pause is always good. Builds the suspense. If not, let's see how well we can remember it from our, from our hearts. <laughs> All right, friends. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Merry Christmas again. Um, definitely catch you on morning tea if you're hanging around. Otherwise, have a very, very great festive season and see you in the new year.